Hi everyone, in this video we are going to go through the solutions to part two of the final exam review. Um, at the top of the document I have some formulas. You need to know which problems to apply them to, but they will be provided. I also added on the formula for a linear approximation when I typed up your final exam. So um, go back and find that formula, be familiar with it. Um, but when we get to that problem, I will of course uh, go through it on this uh, in this review. Uh, so to start with, we have an integral. And in looking at this one, the best first step is to simplify it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see, this integral is equal to the t cubed divided by t squared leaves me with 2t to the first power, the 5t squared over t squared, just 5, t over t squared, plus uh, that would be just 1 over t to the first power, throw it in the parentheses, keep the dt, because I didn't take the antiderivative yet. That's step one. Step two, I am now ready to take my antiderivative. Uh, take the first term, 2t squared over 2, and the twos cancel out. Second term, it's a constant. Antiderivative is that constant times t. Third term, this one needs to jump, yell, scream at you. The antiderivative of 1 over t is the natural log of t. It's an indefinite integral. There's no bounds plus a constant. Moving on to number two. Let's see, I'm gonna write it down. That is a definite integral from one to three. Top is six X. Denominator is the square root of three X squared minus two DX. This is one I'm not gonna be able to simplify to start it out, but I do need to make a U substitution to be able to uh, move on with this integral. So I'm gonna set u equal to what's under the square root in the denominator. Its derivative is 6x times dx. So everything in that blue circle is u, everything in that blue blob is du. Okay, so after the substitution, I have that this integral is equal to u to the negative 1 half du. I took that square root up out of the denominator and wrote it with a power with an exponent because I know the next step is to use the power rule. I'm going to rewrite my bounds. The bottom bound is 3 times 1 squared minus 2, which would be 1 again, 1 squared times 3, and then subtract 2. My new top bound, 3 times 3 squared minus 2. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27 minus two is 25. So my new bounds, my blue bounds are from one to 25. If you don't like rewriting the bounds, keep them one to three. Later on, back substitute your X's in. I'm not gonna have to do that in this one. Now I can take my antiderivative, U to the minus one half, add one to the exponent, it becomes positive one half over the new exponent, which is a half. Bounds are from 1 to 25. I'm going to flip that denominator up, write it as a 2, times top bound is the square root of 25, minus the bottom bound is the square root of 1. I'm rewriting the 1 half as a root because I'm now ta I'm, uh, doing the um, arithmetic here. So then we have 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 2 times 4 is eight as my answer to number two. Oh, I called it two, but it's just B. Letter B. All right, moving on to letter C in number one. And we have the integral of three over X plus E to the two X DX. Okay, um, first term, jump, yell, scream. It has to, you have to just see it. One over X is the natural log. Even if there's a three up top, still the natural log, just the three tags along. Three times the natural log of X. Plus, um, I could show this with a little U substitution. I'll, I'll like write half of one. If you let U equal that exponent of 2X, DU is two times DX. So the DX would equal one half DU. Okay, that, that exponent, uh, we kind of have to account for that when we take the antiderivative. So one half e to the two x because the integral of e to the two x is e. There is uh, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. 
Um, but when there's more up in the exponent, you might need to use a little use substitution or be a little bit more thoughtful about it. Plus a constant C because this is an indefinite integral. Moving on now to problem number two. And two says, solve the initial, in, initial value problem, f prime of x is equal to x plus the sine of x. And I'm also given that f of zero is equal to two. Initial value problem, we're given a derivative. We've got to take the antiderivative, f of x, x squared over two minus the cosine of x. So the x becomes x squared over two. The integral of sine x is negative cosine x, and check that with a derivative because you're better at taking derivatives, plus a constant c. This initial condition, the initial value, allows us to solve for that c. We're going to take f of 0, plug in 0 here, and there, plus c equals 2. 0 squared over 2 drops out. The cosine of 0 is 1. So this becomes a minus 1 right there, which to solve for c, we've got to add it to both sides. So our constant is 3. So our original function, f of x, the same x squared over 2 up above, the same cosine x from up above, but plus 3. That's our f of x. Now we'll look at number three. Number three is a setup, but don't solve for both a and b. We're given the equation y equals 3x to the fourth and the interval from 2 to 4. And for part a, we need the arc length, part b, the surface area. For both of them, I need the derivative dy over dx, 12x um, cubed, 3 times 4 is 12. And then we need that derivative squared. 12 squared is 144. And x cubed squared is x to the sixth. So that's like my preliminary work. Now I can set up both integrals without hopefully too much difficulty. Remember, this is one where you should look back at the list of formulas to make sure that you get it correct. L is the integral from a to b, that is 2 to 4, of the square root of 1 plus the f prime squared, so 144x to the sixth dx. And for part b, the surface area is the same integral from 2 to 4, but it's 2 pi times the original function, 3x to the fourth, and then the square root of 1 plus 144x to the sixth dx. And that's it for 3. Looking now at problem number four, we're given a, an object that we're moving from x equals zero to x equals five, and we're given the force function, f of x is equal to two x. So the further I move the object, the more force I need to apply. Uh, and I'm also gonna write down the bounds, x equals zero, two x equals five. For part a, how much work is done over the entire distance, that would be, setting up the integral from 0 to 5 of our force function with respect to x. Antiderivative is just x squared because the 2's cancel out. Over the bounds from 0 to 5, 25 minus 0 is 25. That would be what Newton meters if you want to get fancy with the uh, units. Okay, that's part A. Part B, how much work is done during the final meter of distance? That would be evaluating the integral from 4 to 5 of 2x dx. Okay, so the antiderivative is still the same, but our bounds are now from 4 to 5. And now we do have something to subtract from the 25. Uh, 25 minus 4 squared is 16, which would be 9 newton meters. Okay, so that's how much work is done in the final meter. Compare that, like if you were to evaluate it from 0 to 1, it'd be just 1 squared minus 0 squared. So there, it's only 1 newton meter to move the first meter, but 9, so it's more work to do to the further along you are with this object. 
Alrighty, let's keep going. I've got number five up next. This is a linear approximation. We are approximating the square root of 17, the formula L of X, F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. Remember with these problems, if at any point you're typing the square root of 17 into your calculator, you've made a mistake. Okay, that's not the purpose of these approximations. Okay, we use a function, f of x is equal to the square root of x, because we're taking, we're, we're trying to figure out a square root of a thing, and a nice number, a equals 16, a nice number close to 17, because I know this square root, and then find all the pieces we need for the formula. So our f of x is the square root of x, so let's take f of a, that would be the square root of 16, which is 4. That I'll need. We also need our derivative. f prime of x is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And let's take f prime of our nice number, 1 over 2 times the square root of 16. 1 over 2 times 4 is 1 over 8. That's a number I'll need. Okay, so now I can rewrite this linear approximation function plugging in what we know, f of a is 4, plus f prime of a is an eighth, times x minus our a number. So that 16, uh, let me point here, that 16 was used in the original function to give me that value there, and the derivative to give me that value right there, and the 16 goes right there. So 16 is used for all of those. And the only thing that I do with the 17, right, I haven't used that at all in this problem, is now we're going to evaluate our linear approximation at 17. Notice I didn't put the square root symbol there. 4 plus an eighth times 17 minus 16. That's the only place that the 17 goes. Okay, 4 plus an eighth times uh, 17 minus 16 is 1. An eighth times 1 is an eighth. 4 plus an eighth is 4.125. You can check that in your calculator if you want to. That's the approximation for the square root of 17 using our function. Now we'll look at number six next. Number six is a motion question. Softball is popped up vertically from a height of one meter with an initial velocity of 30 meters. Begin with the acceleration equation a of t is equal to negative 9.8. And they tell me that an initial velocity is 30. So V of 0 is 30. And a height, an initial height, S of 0, is equal to 1 meter. That's going to be useful in parts A and B. So for part A, represent the velocity of the ball at time t. The antiderivative of acceleration is the velocity function. So we take our antiderivative of negative 9.8 dt. It's a constant. It's an, or let me write velocity here. It's a constant, so its antiderivative is negative 9.8 t plus constant, plus c. Now we can use this initial condition to solve for c. v of 0 which is negative 9.8 times 0 plus c equals 30. So that initial condition gave us, uh, allowed us to solve for c, so we can rewrite that velocity function. v of t is equal to negative 9.8 <clears throat> t plus 30. That's the answer to part a, represent the velocity. Part B represent the position. Let's change colors for part B. We're going to take the antiderivative of our velocity function to come up with our position function. So the integral of negative 9.8t plus 30 dt. Use your power rule on the first first term, negative 4.9t squared plus 30t plus a constant. And once again, 
that s of zero, oops, where did my circling go, that s of zero equals one allows us to solve for uh, the, the value of c. Oops, I didn't label this here. This will be s of t is equal to that. So we'll take s of zero, negative 4.9 times zero squared plus 30 times zero plus our constant equals, where'd it go, one. That drops out, that drops out, c equals one. So our answer to part B is our position is negative 4.9 t squared plus 30t plus 1. That's the answer to part B for this one. So this problem has a little bit more work than some of the other ones. And then the last part of this is letter C. After how many seconds does the ball reach its highest point? So if you think about this one, right, we've got a, this is an inverted parabola. Right, it looks like that. We're trying to find that point right there. Uh, you could find this lots of different ways. You could not use calculus at all. You could use the the vertex formula, negative b over two a, on the on the quadratic here. That would work. Um, you could also note that that's a maximum. Right, where do I have a maximum? It's when well, here's my my parabola. You have you have a maximum when that the. Um, I'm stumbling over my words here. When the derivative of this is equal to zero, we already have the derivative of, of this. It's our velocity function up over here. So if I take that velocity function, set it equal to zero, that's going to give us the maximum point. Negative 9.8t plus 30 is equal to zero. Add the 9.8. 9.8t is equal to 30 and then in your calculator what is 30 divided by 9 i got 3.06 that would be seconds 3.06 seconds yeah we got a couple more here number seven is next it says find the area contained between y equals the square root of x y equals x squared using an integral sketches the sketch may help but is not required my sketch here that I'm going to draw, y equals x squared is a parabola. I'm only concerned with the part in the first quadrant because y equals the square root of x looks like that. Oh, it's not the square root of x. It's x to the 1 fourth, but it still looks like that. y equals uh, x to the 1 fourth. Square root of x and x to the 1 fourth, they look the same. They just grow differently. And this would be y equals x squared. The sketch helps, helps me to figure out a couple things. First, this point right here is important. It is the point one comma one, okay? You can find that by setting them equal to each other. You can find that by like looking at the two functions. What number can I plug in for X that spits out the same Y value, okay? Or you can find it by just, you know, repetition and seeing these functions multiple times. Um, the other uh, important use of the sketch here is which function is on top, right? The green one, that's the top. So when I set up my area, right, top minus bottom, the top of the rectangle is the, the one fourth, x to the one fourth, the bottom of the rectangle is the y equals x squared. So the area for this region, integral from zero to one, and then top minus bottom would be x to the one fourth minus x squared dx. That's how the setup of that one looks. And now our antiderivative, 1 fourth plus 1 is x to the 5 fourths over 5 fourths minus x cubed over 3, evaluated over the bounds from 0 to 1. And then plug in your top bound minus your bottom bound, flip that 5 fourths over, 1 to the 5 fourths minus uh, one cubed is one over three. One to the five-fourths, also one. So this would be uh, four-fifths minus a third. And when I type that into my calculator, I got seven over 15. Use your fraction button, save you some time. 
finally, I'm going to do this last one. I'm not going to change slides here, even though uh, this is a different problem, because it's going to use the same graph. Um, find the volume of the solid obtained by revolving this same region about the y-axis. You can use either disk washer or shell. It's your preference. Using um, this picture, uh, actually, I'm going to keep my same rectangle on here, because if I take that guy and revolve it about the x-axis, pause if you want to decide what shape it becomes, disk, washer, or shell, um, I am going to get a cylindrical shell. See if I can sketch one fairly quickly here. There's my poorly drawn cylindrical shell. You get the idea. Um, so if you want to use a dx integral, you're going to need to do v equals integral from a to b to pi x f of x dx, and actually it'll be uh, f minus g. Okay, that's going to be using my dx integral. If you want to use a dy integral, right? A dy integral would be horizontal slice cross section, and that would involve um, um that that would create a a disc or in this case a washer because there would be a hole in it i'm not sure which is necessarily easier but since i already have the dx one um ready to rock and roll let's plug into that v equals integral the bounds just like the previous problem are from zero to one two pi x and then in parentheses top minus bottom same as before x to the one fourth minus x squared dx we can factor the 2 pi out in front and then i think before i take the antiderivative i've got to sub distribute the x into the parentheses and it becomes x to the 5 fourths and then x cubed similar to the last problem but we haven't done the antiderivative yet that's what we're ready to uh, to do now so this first term, another add another one to that, and it's five, six, seven, eight, nine fourths over nine fourths, and it's x to the fourth over four, evaluated over the bounds from zero to one. I think this one is probably the easier of the two methods, but I could be wrong. I don't know. You can try it the other way if you want to. Almost done here. Two pi, nine fourths flips up, four over nine. And then 1 to the 9 fourths, which is going to stay a 1, uh, minus 1 to the 4th over 4. That looks a little messy, so we'll clean it up. Let's see, I dropped my volume equals along the way. There we go. So finally, v equals 2 pi. That should be in parentheses. Now it is. Um, times 4 over 9 times 1 minus 1 over 4. And then typing all the all that into my calculator, not the pi though, I'm leaving that off. You get seven pi over eighteen. I mean I didn't type the pi in. So I did four ninths minus a quarter, found out what that equals, multiplied it by two, seven over eighteen, tack the pi back on. Okay. That's the end of the review. Went through it a little bit quickly, um, but you can rewatch it as many times as you need to. If you have questions on the individual problems, please send me an email um, and let me know. And I'll try to get back to you over the weekend as you prepare for this test. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the snow day. Maybe you would have preferred to have gone through some review in class, uh, but this is the hand we're dealt. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend, um, you know, study when you can, and I will see you Monday morning. Thanks. Bye.